When I was traveling in Ireland, I had the chance to see the Titanic Museum while it was still under construction. My favorite design feature of the museum was the overall shape and the angular exterior wall paneling. As I was sketching the idea for a new lamp design, my goal was to keep it as simple as possible. The shape of the lamp will be similar to the Titanic Museum and it will be created by attaching vertical panels to two horizontal frames at an angle. The angle will flip at the center of one side of the frame so that the panels change direction. You'll see it in the 3D model that we'll create in the next step. Using the rough sketch as a reference, I use a software called Rhinoceros and start with another lamp that I designed so I could reference some of the design elements. I start by drawing the square frame, which is going to be 4 inches on every side. I'm also drawing lines for the center cutouts where the light bulb will be installed. Using the design that was in this file as a reference, I trace one of the slots, move it to the corner of the square frame, and create the rectangular cutouts along the perimeter. I tested a few variations for the spacing of each slot. The goal was to space them far enough apart to block direct views of the light bulb at the center while keeping the number of panels as minimal as possible. Once I have the spacing figured out, I mirror it to flip the angled slots to the other side. The idea is that the panels would all face the same direction in each each of the four quadrants of the square frame. Next, I create the second frame by copying the first one over and creating a square cutout. This will be the larger area where my hand can fit to install the light bulb. This step is the most important part of the design process, figuring out the shape and proportion of the panel. To design it, I draw an angled line and divide it into four triangles. This represents the angular facade of the Titanic Museum. With the design complete, I create a simple 3D model by extruding every shape to an eighth inch, which is the thickness of the plywood I plan to use for this project. I use the move and rotate tools to move the panel into the frames. I copy it over to all the slots and this is what the model looks like. There were a few things that I didn't like about this design. First, the height of the lampshade didn't have a good proportion. There were also too many panels, which created a really dense lampshade. I went back to the drawing board, redesigned the panel by removing the top triangle and reassembling the 3D model to review. I followed the same steps as before and this is how the new prototype looks. The height looks a lot better in this version. Now I just need to reduce the number of panels around the perimeter. So I modify the number of slots in the frame, recreate the 3D model again and this is how it turned out. This final version looks a lot better with its overall proportions and the reduced number of panels. Since it's shorter, I'll flip the frames around so that the light bulb is on the top and the open frame is on the bottom. It'll be a really nice looking pendant light. I bring over my 8th inch eco birch plywood and mask it with paper tape to protect the surface from scorches and burns from the laser. I insert one sheet into my laser cutter and start the process of cutting this project. This is one of the projects that I've looked forward to designing for a while because it combines my life as an architect with my hobby of designing products. It's a great example of how we can all find inspiration from everything around us including the places we experience and the things that we see. This is one of the smallest lamps that I've designed and my only concern is that installing the light bulb might be difficult. I'll need to fit my hand between the frame and light bulb to screw it into place but I'm confident that it'll work out. For this Titanic Museum inspired lamp, it took a total of 40 minutes to cut all the pieces. Once I have all of the pieces, I bring them over to my work table and remove the paper masking tape from each piece. I use my Maxi Gear super glue and apply it in all of the slots along one side of both frames. I bring over one of the panels, align the top slot with the frame that has a cutout for the light fixture kit to be installed. Then I bring over the bottom frame with the larger square cutout and attach it at the other slot in the panel. Now we can bring over the panels one by one and attach them to both frames. With one side complete, I turn the assembly over so that another side faces up and I apply glue at every slot. I bring over the panels and attach them one by one into the frame. This is the process we'll follow until the entire project is assembled. I bring over my light fixture kit and light bulb, install them into the Titanic Museum inspired table lamp and the project is complete. 
I love the way that the light passes through the gaps of every panel, and when we reach the center of one side where the panels flip to face the opposite direction, the vertical gap creates a beautiful moment where we can see the light bulb at the center. Even though it's an abstraction of the Titanic Museum, the overall proportion and form definitely resembles a small model of a building. It gives me a lot of ideas of potential architecture projects and building types. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other woodcraft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.